Okay, we have successfully uploaded the files. Now it's time to actually run the Drupal installer. So, in my case, I'm running on cachebacon.shooflydesign.org. This is going to be the fake band site we're creating. And I uploaded the file straight into my public HTML folder. So, I'm going to load up a browser and go to cachebacon.shooflydesign.org. Now, this may be different in your situation, and your welcome letter can help you with this. So if I look at my fake welcome letter, I can see that I had username.hostingcompany.com here. Sometimes that will be where you'll go. If you've set up a custom domain with your web hosting initially, you should be able to go to that custom domain and just do it there. If you've set it up on a subdomain as I have in this lesson, then because you set it up, you should be able to remember what that subdomain is. If you've installed Drupal in a folder, you should also be able to figure out where that is. But the point is that you go to the right place and just load it right up. And the Drupal installer will pop up for you. And so now we're going to go through the process of actually running the installer. So we start with this selection of an installation profile. If you happen to have looked at installation profiles that I mentioned before, you may have other options here, but out of the box, Drupal comes with standard and minimal. I recommend standard because, as it says, it has some commonly used features pre-configured. Minimal starts out with almost nothing, which is nice if you want to be a real tinkerer and turn on everything yourself. But I'd start with standard. It doesn't turn on every single thing Drupal comes with, but it takes care of a lot of the things that most people will probably want out of the box. And here we have the language selection. We're only concerned with English right now, so that's what I'll go with, but you do have this link that will help you installing Drupal in other languages as well. Now we get to set up the database settings. So I'm going to refer back to my welcome letter. And in this case, in a big break from protocol, I've actually used some real database settings. So I have a database called Cache Bacon, which I will copy and paste here. And my username is the same. So again, I will copy this and paste it here. The password, copy and paste. And then there are some advanced settings down here. So if I need to change my host, my database port, or I want to set a table prefix, I can do that all here. The table prefix is what you would use, just like it says here, if more than one application will be sharing this database. It can be nice to set a prefix, so you can be sure that there will be no collisions between database tables. In my case, I have a fresh database, nothing else is going in there, so I don't need a prefix, and I'll leave everything in its default settings. And Drupal runs through the installation of its various pieces in the standard installation profile. And now we get the opportunity to set up a few initial settings. So let's do that. We'll call the site Cache Bacon. And I will set up an email address here. The site email address is the one that, as it says here, automated emails such as registration information will be sent from this address. So once I set this, by clicking onto another field or using the tab key. I also get that email address copied down here. This is for the site maintenance account. These are two separate things. You are welcome to use the same email address for both, but if you want a separate email address to be used for the initial user account, it can be different. Just keep in mind that this one is the one that people registering for your site will see. It will not necessarily be this one. So now we need to set up the maintenance account. Technically, this is user number one. In Drupal parlance, this is kind of like the God account. It's the account that can literally do anything with your website that's possible through the Drupal user interface. Nothing is locked away from it. So you want to be careful with this account. Don't give it out to anybody else. I'm going to call this administrator. And we have this email address. As I said, you can change this to something else if you would like. Now we need to set a password. And Drupal has a password strength meter here to help you choose a good one. Make sure that it's not your username, it's not your spouse's name, your significant other's name, anything that's easy to guess for someone that knows you. And Drupal encourages you to mix it up 
make it nice and long, at least six characters, add a mix of letters and numbers and punctuation. If you do all those things, you'll have a pretty good password that should be hard to guess. And I also encourage you to use a password manager when dealing with passwords so that you're using a unique password for every single website and you offer yourself the most secure and safest computing experience. So here we go. Let's put in a password. And there we go. I've got my password in. Drupal tells me that they match, so I should be able to proceed without issue. A couple more settings. I need to set the default country. This would be where you are located. I'm in the United States, so there we go. And Drupal picked out the correct time zone for me. If you need to change that, you have this enormous list of time zones all over the world. Setting those correctly will make sure that your posts will be marked with the correct time. So the last two things are related to notifications of updates to Drupal code. So you can have this set up to check for updates automatically. I recommend you do that. When you bring your site into production, that is when you take it live and the public can actually see it, you might consider turning this off just so Drupal isn't checking for updates in the background and possibly slowing your site down a little bit. But generally speaking, it's a good idea to leave this on so that you're keeping up with security updates and the like. You can also choose to receive email notifications when new updates are found. I'm going to leave this off for now because I don't care about receiving those email notifications, but feel free to leave that on. Those notifications will go to your site maintenance account. So they'll go to this email address up here. Once that's done, we can save and continue. My password manager is prompting me to save this stuff. And now here we go. We have installed Drupal and we can visit the new site. Here we are. So I start out on the default Drupal front page, and as you can see, it starts me out logged in. There's no additional login step required. So that is how to install and take a look at the home page for your Drupal site.